The Lord be with you, and welcome again to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Junction City, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Timothy Roser, and on this Christmas day, we follow the order of matins. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us worship him. Psalm 98. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our office hymn this day is number 384 in Lutheran service book of the Father's love begotten. <clears throat> of the Father's love begotten, ere the worlds began to be, he is Alpha and Omega, he the source, the ending, he of the things that are, that have been, and that future year shall see evermore and evermore. Oh, that birth forever blessed, when the virgin full of grace, by the Holy Ghost conceiving, for the Savior of our race, and the babe, the world's redeemer, first revealed his sacred face evermore and evermore. This is he whom seers in old time chanted of with one accord, whom the voices of the prophets promised in their faithful word. Now he shines the long expected, let creation praise its Lord evermore and evermore. O ye heights of heaven, adore him. Angel hosts his praises sing. Powers, dominions bow before him. 
and extol our God and King. Let no tongue on earth be silent, every voice in concert ring evermore and evermore. Christ to thee with God the Father and O Holy Ghost to thee, him enchant and high thanksgiving and unending praises be. Honor, glory, and dominion, and eternal victory evermore and evermore. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, the 11th chapter. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, 
the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place where your glory dwells. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. I wonder if you have been troubled like me, when all eyes on Christmas go under the tree to the gifts, brightly wrapped with ribbons and bows, while people forget how the real story goes. But once in a while, or twice if we're blessed, a few words we hear will stand out from the rest. The story they tell is just make-believe, but they hint at the truth and the gift we receive. So the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling, how could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled and puzzled till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. What if Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store? What if Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more? If only the Grinch had been given a clue as to what Christmas means for me and for you. For the real gift that came on that first Christmas night was a son, a savior, true God, our true light. The story began many centuries ago, but not at the North Pole covered in snow. It began in a garden, fair, warm, and bright, created by God who said, let there be light. Through the word, God made all things, and all things were good. Everything lived and worked as it should, till Adam and Eve were tempted and fell, and plunged this whole world on a pathway to hell. That may sound unpleasant this bright holy day, but to understand Christmas, I must show you the way that God chose to clean up this mess that we're in, to win back our lives and save us from sin. This world had been plunged into darkness and fear. There was no real hope, no joy, no cheer. We're all born in sin from before our first breath, and that sin demands judgment, and the punishment is death. But God, out of love for this poor, sinful world, would not let us all on the trash pile be hurled. He promised a savior, a son, a seed, who would enter this world to meet all our need. Down through the centuries, God spoke his word and granted his people to believe what they heard. Through Abraham, Moses, Isaiah, and Micah, God's prophets announced the coming Messiah. From out of you, Israel, I'll send forth my son. From Jacob's line, David's house, there will come one who will bring light and life to this sin-darkened place. The glory of God you will see face to face. And so, in keeping with his perfect word, God's promise was kept. And an angel was heard who announced to some shepherds the birth of a boy in David's town, Bethlehem. What a message of joy. For the skies were filled with angels that night, singing praises to the king and shining in light. 
The king had been born. The savior was here. And the payment for all the world's sin was now near. Yes, Jesus had come. And what would he do? He would die on the cross for me and for you. But that was the reason this child was here. He came to redeem us, and the price would be dear. In his death and his rising, he paid for your sin. Your life he has spared. Your soul he did win. And then in your baptism he made you his own, so that you may stand with him at his heavenly throne. Oh, what gifts. Oh, what glories this Christmas day brings. Far better than all of those shiny wrapped things that divert our attention and capture our eye. Here's the good news of Christmas. Your Savior is nigh. Now, you want, may want Christmas to last all the year with its love, its joy, and its hope, and its cheer. But then you sit back on your fat, lazy rear and watch this whole holiday thing disappear. For know it or not, it's this light that you need in this sin-darkened world. Pay attention. Take heed. Wake up to your sin. Repent of your state. And listen to Jesus before it's too late. You belong to him now. To this child you see as a mere decoration that's under your tree. For he's real and alive and still with you today. So bow down to him and to him humbly pray. He'll answer your prayers for he said that he would. And he promised to do whatever is good, whatever is best for your life, for your soul. To bring you with him to that heavenly goal. In the meantime, you fight with the world, with yourself, with the devil who wants your faith left up on the shelf. Don't listen to them. Turn to God's gift. His word and his supper won't, supper won't leave you adrift. So open your Bible and read it, you fool. Don't sit there and miss out on God's greatest tool to strengthen your faith, to guide you through strife, to comfort your heart, and to give you new life. Then share what you learn as you gather with others, those baptized in Christ, your sisters and brothers. With them you can gripe, and with them you can grouse, and with them take comfort meeting here in God's house. Show forth God's great light in your words and behavior and tell other people of Jesus, your Savior. Don't keep all these wonderful things to yourself, nor hide away Jesus way up on a shelf. You can take down your lights, your garland, your tree, and still cling to Jesus. He's your Savior, you see. For this great Christmas feast has not come to an end. This is but the beginning, as on Christ you depend. Yes, if only the Grinch had been given a clue as to what Christmas means for me and for you. For God's Christmas gift this day shines so bright. It's his son, our savior, true God, our true light. The peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. We praise you, O God, we acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The holy church throughout all the world does acknowledge you. The father of an infinite majesty, your adorable true and only son. Also the Holy Ghost, the comforter. You are the king of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. We therefore pray you to help your servants, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. 
Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you and we worship your name forever and ever. Grant, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let your mercy be upon us as our trust is in you. O Lord, in you have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, you reign over all the earth. We lift up our voices and sing for joy to you in celebration of the incarnation of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Preserve this delight among your people throughout the church year. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Send forth men to publish your peace and bring us your good news of happiness. Keep them faithful to declare your gracious reign in Christ. Bless the work of missionaries at home and abroad, that all the ends of the earth may see your salvation. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious Lord, the great mystery of the Incarnation was first believed and proclaimed by common men and women, Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. Give us confidence to tell the joyful message of our Savior's birth, life, death, and resurrection that your spirit may work the miracle of faith as he wills. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, guide all who administer and judge our laws in this land. Preserve us in justice and truth, and make us faithful citizens, honoring those in authority over us. Wherever rulers spurn your calling to serve justly, are hostile to your truth, or persecute your people, turn them from their evil and protect your church. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant healing, peace, patience, and faith to the, that endures to all who suffer sickness in mind or body, to all homebound, and to any who ask our prayers. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the birth of your Son, you have called people from all times and places into the body of Christ, his church. We give you thanks for all the believers who have gone before us, especially who have been with us during Christmas's past and now live with you. Give us a sure confidence in your promise of resurrection and eternal life, and bring us at last together with them into your presence at the full coming of your kingdom. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Lord be with you, and a blessed Christmas.